Now, I will explain the procedure to communicate with devices not made by Keyence. For this example, let's use a FANUC robot and communicate via Ethernet IP with implicit and explicit messages. First, open the unit editor. Then open the Ethernet IP settings window using this icon. Since the unit is not made by Keyens, it will not display it in this list. Therefore, an EDS file from the device manufacturer is needed. This contains the necessary information to set up communication. For this example, I'll need the EDS file from the FANUC website and register it to KV Studio. In a situation where there is no available EDS file, using a generic device is an option. If the EDS file is not available, drag and drop this generic device. Then, enter the IP address set to the robot. In this case, the IP address for this device has been set in advance. So, I will click OK without changing any setting. Then, right-click the added generic device and open the connection settings window. If an EDS file has been already registered, all of these parameters will have these conditions set. In this case, an EDS file is not registered. Therefore, these parameters need to be set manually. Refer to the manual of the device for the necessary settings information. Set this connection point. According to the manual, these are the connection points. Here, all data to communicate with the robot is assigned to slot 1. Now, select in 101 for the connection from the robot to the PLC. And select out 151 for the connection from the PLC to the robot. Here, I need to set the data size according to the manual. I need to have 8 bytes for each word. Click OK. Next, I'll set the communication cycle for the robot to this RPI. Each device has a different range of RPI. And this information is provided in the manual. According to the manual, the RPI for this device is 8 milliseconds. Now these settings are finished. If you have the EDS file, these settings such as the connection point and data size will be pre-configured. As you can see, configuring these connection settings when using a generic device is not too complicated even if you don't have an EDS file. When you click OK on the unit editor, the variable settings screen is displayed where you can create variables to be sent received in communications. Enter variable names for sending and receiving respectively. Click OK. Now the setting is finished. The variables for the Ethernet IP communication I just created can have their sizes and assigned devices checked by double-clicking this menu. I already set 8 bytes for both input and output. 8 bytes contain 4 words. Therefore, two array variables with 4 U and are created for in and out. The variables used for the Ethernet IP communication are assigned to the device type W. You can create a program by using either the variable or the device. In the latter program, these array variables or W devices are used for communicating with a robot via Ethernet IP communication. Now, let me explain about the relationship between variables used for Ethernet IP communication and assigning a robot signal. These are the signals I use for communicating with the robot via Ethernet IP. It exchanges signals called UO and UI that have been assigned the Ethernet IP communication addresses from the robot. 
to assign signals used in the Ethernet IP to the desired communication addresses, refer to the manual of the connecting device. For example, when the input signal U01 command enable is turned on, bit 0 from EIP and 0 is turned on. In the case with the output from the PLC to the robot to turn on the start signal UI6 in the robot. Turn on bit 5 from EIP out 0 from the PLC. While the signal of the FANUC robot starts with 1, the bit number of KV series starts with 0. Be mindful about these numbers. This is the program I created. I'll explain the program. These are the circuits to turn on UI2 hold and UI8 enable. When these two signals are turned on, the robot goes into standby condition. Next, this is a program to execute a robot function. This bit is an input from the robot to the PLC. When the robot is ready to execute the program, U01 command enable turns on. When UI6 start turns on with command enable set as an interlock, the robot program starts. Then, the prog run signal turns on as an execution value of the robot program. It is this bit in the latter program. This circuit is a program to stop the robot function. When the cycle stop signal is turned on while the program is running, that is prog run is on, the robot function stops. I'll transfer the program to the PLC to check the performance. Transfer completed. First, I will turn on the hold and enable signals. Then, the robot should go into the standby condition and this command enable signal will turn on. Let's turn on the first two signals. As you see, the robot goes into the standby condition and the command enable signal turns on. Now, the robot program should be executable. Let's turn on this variable to execute the robot program. The robot program started and the prod run signal turned on. Next, I can stop the robot program by turning on the cycle stop signal. As you can see, the prog run signal turned off, and the robot program stopped. The robot I.O. signals can be easily read written when an implicit message is used. Next, I will use explicit messages and acquire the robot coordinates and rewrite the parameters. In an implicit message, the data and size to communicate are set in the connection setting. And the sending receiving timing is set automatically for each RPI. On the contrary, in case of an explicit message, all of the target data to read write and their timing are communicated by controlling them from the latter program. Therefore, if the communication is executed by using only explicit messages, it is not necessary to register the device or to set the connections on the Ethernet IP setting window. This is because all control is executed from the latter program. Some data which cannot be read written with an implicit message can be sometimes become readable writable with an explicit message. To check what data can be read written with an explicit message or to check if the data supports an explicit message, refer to the manual of the connecting device. I'll now explain the latter program necessary for explicit messages. Then I will actually read write the robot coordinates and the parameter. In the KV series, 
Communications by explicit messages are executed by using commands and request relays assigned to the unit. These are the commands used to execute explicit messages. First, is the message to commands. These commands are used to specify the target device and data to communicate. Specify the parameters of the target device such as an IP address, service code, class ID, etc. For the service code, specify if the data is read or written, and whether the data is handled as the single data or as a block. In the class ID, parameters are decided for each target data. These parameters are provided in the manual of the connecting device. Refer to the manual when setting the parameters. Next, I'll actually send the data by using the message send command. The data size is stored in the leading section and the actual sending data in the following section. When receiving the data, use this message receive command. In the same way, it stores the data size in the leading section and the actual received data string in the following section. The last one is the message st command. This is a command to read the completion code. It is not mandatory. However, if the communication fails, you can read the completion code to define the failure details. In the KV series, you can create explicit message programs by combining these commands and the request relays. This is the program I created. This program is used to read the current coordinate of the robot and to rewrite the position registered by using explicit messages. Now, I'll explain the program for reading. In this program, I'll set the parameters for the message to command and the message send command. For the message to commands, I will set the parameters of the communicating device such as an IP address, a service code, etc. For the parameters such as a service code, input the data provided in the manual of the communicating device. These are the data strings to send which are specified to the message send command. Because this is the position register call command, there is no send data. Therefore, the send data size at the leading section of the send data is zero. These variables are set respectively to the message to command and the message send command. This is a request relay for the explicit message. When the communication ends, this relay turns on. When the end relay turns on, the receive data string is read by the message receive command. The read data is stored to this structure type variables which were set according to the position register content. Although FANUC position register has one byte unit member, the structure type of the KV series does not support one byte unit member. Therefore, in this program, the data is arranged to store in the KV series structure type variable by shifting the read data in a byte unit. This is a failed relay of a communication. In case a communication fails, read the end code with the message st command. Now, I'll explain about the write program. Also in case of writing, all parameters such as a service code are provided in the manual. Now, because I am writing to the position register 8, this attribute ID is set to 8. To write data, I will create the data which supports the FANUC position register and set it to the send data string. In the same way, the KV series does not support the byte unit data. So the data is arranged here. According to the manual, the position register size is 44 bytes. So I'll store 44 to the send data size at the leading section. 
I'll set this command to the message send command. In the same way as reading. When the request relay is turned on and the communication ends, the received data is read by the message receive command. However, because this is the position register write command, there is no received data. Therefore, unlike reading, a program to establish the received data is not required. Now, I can transfer this program to the PLC to read the current coordinates, rewrite the robot position register, and change the operation pattern. Transfer completed. This position zero variable is the structure type variable used to store the data read from the robot such as the current coordinates. When this variable is turned on, the command to read the current coordinates is sent and that data is stored. The members from X to R are used as the storage area for the current coordinates. Now, I can turn on the variable to read the current coordinate. As you can see, the current coordinates of the robot can be read with an explicit message. In the same way, let's rewrite the position register. When the position register is rewritten, the robot's target coordinates changes. This also changes the operation pattern. I will turn on this variable to change the robot operation pattern. And now the robot operation pattern has changed. As I explained, the KV series communicates by using explicit messages by combining several commands and request relays. I have also explained how to communicate with the FANUC robot by using explicit messages. Keyence also has a reference program which contains a function block for easy execution of the contents of this video. When this function block is imported to the user program, reading writing of the position register, etc. becomes easy to accomplish just by specifying IP addresses. If you are interested in these function blocks, please consult with Keyence.